Have you ever wondered whether to use a REST API, GraphQL, or GRPC? In this video, we're going to break down how each one works, weigh up the pros and cons, and help you decide when you should use one approach over the other. So let's jump in. REST stands for Representational State Transfer, and a REST API is a web communication method that uses HTTP to create and perform CRUD, so create, read, update, delete, operations on resources. It's based on stateless communication between client and server, and typically uses standard HTTP methods like GET, POST, PUT, and DELETE. And by stateless, we mean each request is independent of previous ones, so there's no need to remember past interactions between client and server, which simplifies the process. So it works by having the client sends the HTTP request to a specific API endpoint. The request includes necessary information, such as headers, parameters, and body data. The server then receives the request and processes it, for example, querying a database, and returns an appropriate response. The server responds with the HTTP status code, so for instance, 200 OK for a success, 404 not found for missing resources, and also possibly a body containing data, for example, JSON or XML. And so then this process is then repeated whenever a client makes a new request to the server. So in this example here, we have a simple express server and we have our defined our endpoints here. So we have our get users. So this will retrieve users. And again, we're just defining it in memory just for simplicity's sake. But obviously in production, this would reach out to an external data source. So for example, a database. We also have our post endpoint our post users endpoint to add a new user. We also have our put users endpoint, which identifies users details by their ID. And then we also have a delete users endpoint, which again deletes a user by their ID. And then the client is simply some HTML and JavaScript. So in the HTML, we'll display all the users in the user list. And then we have a form to create a new user. And then in the JavaScript, we have our fetch users function, which is called when the page loads, and this will get all our users. And then we'll also attach an event listener to the submit of our form so that we can then create a post request to then create a new user. And then once that's complete, we will then fetch our users to display the new list. So we can start our server with node server.js. And then if we go to localhost 3000, we can see in our network tab that we have a initial user's request. Again, to the user's endpoint, it's a get request 200. And in the response, we've got our list of users here. And then to add a new one, so I'll add a new user like so. And then you can see we've got another request here. It's a post request to our user's endpoints and that includes our new uh, user data. And then finally, we call the user's endpoint again to fetch that new list of data. So super simple and all the code is linked in a repo below. Use cases include web and mobile applications. So these are typically front end apps that rely on back end services for data. And it's also used in microservices. So REST APIs are popular in service oriented architectures where different services communicate over HTTP. In terms of advantages, it's very scalable. The statelessness allows the server to handle many client requests independently. Caching, so HTTP based REST APIs can take advantage of built in HTTP caching, improving performance, and also flexibility and wide adoption. So it can work with many formats like JSON and XML, as well as can be accessed using a variety of programming languages. However, for the disadvantages, there's a lot of overhead. So repeated requests can lead to higher overhead compared to protocols like GraphQL that allow fetching all required data in a single request. And it's also not real time. So REST APIs are based on the request response patterns and aren't inherently designed for real time communication. So web sockets might be a better option there if you need real time data. So next we have GraphQL. So GraphQL is a query language for APIs and a runtime for executing those queries with your existing data. It allows clients to request exactly the data they need, making APIs more efficient and flexible. All interactions occur over a single endpoint, simplifying API management, and GraphQL uses a strong type system to define the capabilities of the API, enabling clients to understand what data is available. So it works by first having the client send a query. The client defines a query specifier, and this query will specify exactly what data is needed. The server will then process that request, and then finally it will return a response in a JSON format containing precisely the data requested. In our server.js file, we've defined a simple express GraphQL server, which again has our single GraphQL endpoint. Here we're defining our GraphQL schema, which has our types, our queries, and our mutations. So again, queries are for fetching data from the server, and mutations are when we change data from the server. So deleting users, updating users, adding users. And then we have our resolver functions to handle queries and mutations interacting with that data layer. And again, client, the HTML is very similar to what we had before, display the user list, and then we have a form to create a new user. Then we have our fetch users function, which again defines a query here. 
to get users and we're specifying we want to get the ID name and email fields. And then we're going to use fetch to send uh, to hit our GraphQL endpoint. And again, convention in GraphQL is to always use a post request. And then again, we will attach an event listener to the uh, submit on the form. And this will then call a mutation add user to then create our new user on the server. Once that is successful, we will then uh, recall our fetch users function so that the new list is updated. So we can start our server with node server.js. Then if we go to port 4000, you can see here, we have our initial request to our GraphQL endpoint. It's a post request as that is the convention. And then our response will give us again, that user, that list of users. And then if I create a new one, like so, you can see our first GraphQL request again, it's sent to the same endpoints. Payload includes, you can see the data included, includes this new test email. And then the response now will also include this new test email. And then again, we're gonna call the GraphQL endpoints. Um, and this time we're refetching the list. And so that's why in the response, we've now got our third email. So again, very simple, but again, the key thing here is being able to define exactly what fields we want to retrieve from the server it can be very beneficial. And again, only one endpoint. And so for the use cases, so it's used in mobile and single page applications to fetch exactly the data needed, optimizing network usage. It's also used in complex systems and rapid development. So you can evolve APIs without versioning as clients can request new fields without affecting existing queries. And then the advantages include efficient data fetching. So clients get exactly what they request. So reducing the over fetching and under fetching of data. It's strongly typed, so this improves tooling, error checking, and documentation. And it's also a single endpoint, so this simplifies API architecture and reduces the need for multiple REST endpoints. The disadvantages include caching complexity. So traditional HTTP-based caching is less effective due to the post requests and dynamic queries and the overhead, so the processing complex queries and adds significant load to the server. And then there's also a learning curve, so it requires learning new concepts and setting up a GraphQL server. So then finally, we have GRPC. So it is an open source remote procedure call framework developed by Google and enables efficient communication between services, especially in microservices architecture. GRPC uses protocol buffers, protobuf, as its interface definition language and data serialization format, allowing for high performance and cross language compatibility. So it works by first defining our service with protocol buffers. So you create a dot proto file, where you define the service methods and the message types. You then generate code from the protobuf, so use your protoc compiler to generate server and client code in your preferred programming language. You then implement your server, which implements the service methods defined in the .proto file. You can then implement your client, so this uses the generated client code to interact with the server methods. And communication, so GRPC uses HTTP2 for transport, which supports features like multiplexing and full duplex streaming. And then finally, there's serialization. So messages are serialized using protocol buffers, which are compact and efficient binary formats. So looking at this demo, we have our users.proto file here, which again defines the service, its methods and message types. And then in our server.js file, we've implemented the service methods defined in the .proto file. And then we don't need to use a protoc compiler because we're using the proto loader and GRPC JS packages. And so these packages allow us to dynamically load and parse dot proto files at runtime, eliminating the need to generate code beforehand using the protoc compiler. And then finally, we have a client here, which will, you know, interact with the server methods. And then we also have a main method, which will then uh, use those methods and call them periodically using set timeout. So we can see the full range of methods. So again, we'll start the server with node server.js, and then we're going to start our client with node client.js. And so you can see here, we're initially getting all the clients. We then add a client, in this case, Alice, and then you can see we're getting our clients, and now we have this new client. Then we're going to update John Smith. So John Doe goes to John Smith, and you can see we now have John Smith in our updated users list. Then we're going to delete the user with ID2, which was Jane Doe. And as you can see, she is no longer present in this new updated list. So again, super simple example, but hopefully it helps demonstrate the core concepts of how to implement your PC. So use cases include microservices communication. So it's efficient, low latency communication between microservices, especially in polyglot environments. It's also real-time services, so it's ideal for services that require streaming data, such as chat applications, live data feeds, and IoT devices. And it's also 
used in inter-service communication, so back-end services communicating over high-performance protocol. The advantages include high performance, so it uses HTTP2 and protocol buffers for efficient network utilization. There's also cross-language compatibility, so it supports multiple programming languages. And then there's also bi-directional streaming, so it supports client-side and server-side and bi-directional streaming out of the box. The disadvantages include complexity, so there's a steeper learning curve compared to REST APIs. You know, it requires the understanding of protocol buffers and RPC concepts. There's also tooling and infrastructure, so it requires additional tools like the Proton compiler and can be more challenging to set up. And then obviously there is also limited browser support. So in summary, we have a REST API, so again, it's a web communication method that uses HTTP requests to perform CRUD operations on resources, and it's based on stateless communication between client and server, typically using standard HTTP methods like GET, POST, PUT, and DELETE. For GraphQL, it's a query language for APIs and a runtime for executing those queries with your existing data. It allows clients to request exactly the data they need, making the APIs more efficient and flexible. And all interactions occur over a single endpoint and are strongly typed. And finally, gRPC is an open source remote procedure call framework, and it enables efficient communication between services, especially in microservices architectures. gRPC uses protocol buffers as its interface definition language and data the serialization format allowing for high performance and cross language compatibility if you got any value out of this if you could like and subscribe and share it with a friend it helps the channel out a lot and also if you're preparing for technical interviews be sure to check out techprep.app and i will see you in the next one